Yo, all right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Chicka Chicka Learning. And in this video, we're going to do an example problem drawing shear moment diagrams of a beam with an overhang. Here is what the beam structure looks like. So here's my beam with an overhang. It's got a uniformly distributed load for that first six feet. And then it's linearly distributed or dis decreasing down to zero for that last nine feet. And so one of the first things that we're going to want to do is to determine the support reactions. We're just going to need to apply equilibrium equations. And here I'll have a, a vertical reaction BY, vertical CY, and a horizontal CX and using equilibrium equations. So I know from some of the forces in the horizontal direction that Cx is gonna be zero. I'll take moments about C, and that should give me By directly. And so for this segment AB, for this uniformly distributed load, I'd have a resultant here, and that would be three feet from the support here. And this is gonna have a resultant of 48 kips. The linearly distributed part, this triangle, is gonna have a a resultant of one half the base which is nine feet times eight kip per foot which will be 36 kips and going ahead and using my sum of the moments I would get here moments about C would give me 48 kips times 12 feet minus by times 9 feet plus 36 kips times well the arm here or the center is two-thirds of this 9 which is going to be 6 feet and so 36 kips times 6 feet equal to 0 and when I go ahead and I solve for this I will get 88 kips and I'll get a positive result indicating that the direction that I drew this is good and so this will be 88 kips pointing upwards and then I'll go ahead and I'll use some of the forces in the vertical direction. And this will tell me that here I will have, this will be negative 48 kips, that uniformly distributed load, plus BY minus the triangle or the linearly distributed load of 36 kips plus CY equals zero. And I know that BY is 88 kips here, and that's a positive value right there because it's also pointing upwards and this is going to be I'm gonna get a CY of negative four kips and that negative four kips just means that you know I, I initially I drew the CY as pointing upwards but what it really means is that CY is four kips pointing down so now that I have the support reactions, the next thing I want to do is draw the shear moment diagrams. And the one of the things I like to do is to redraw the beam structure with the support reactions replaced by the magnitude and direction of the force or moment that are acting on my beam. So I'm just going to redraw the, the schematic. Point B, I had a vertical support reaction of 88 kips. And at point C, I had a vertical support reaction pointing downwards of four kips like this. And then now after I've drawn the structure, I'm going to draw vertical lines at discontinuities here. And the discontinuities are beginnings and ends of distributed loads or concentrated forces and moments. So I have a discontinuity at A because it's the beginning of a distributed load. I have a discontinuity at B because it's the end of the uniformly distributed load. Also, it's where the concentrated force of 88 kips. And here at C, I have my last discontinuity. And that is because I have the end of a distributed load and a concentrated force of four kips there as well. Now what we want to do is utilize really the only four relationships that we need to draw shear and moment diagrams graphically. And they are these four equations here. And really what I like to do is in this, when I draw graphically, I like to go from discontinuity to discontinuity or vertical line to vertical line and figure out within each of these, where do I start? How much do I change? And then what is the shape? That's it. And all I can do all of that using those four relationships right there. So if I go ahead and I start here, like my vertical line for the shear diagram here is at point A. 
And so I'm going to start at A or this vertical line going here to here from A to B. Now I'm looking at where do I start? What is my starting value? And here at point A, if I just focus on this portion of point A, I ignore the distributed load. There is no concentrated force. Therefore, I start at zero. And then I'm trying to figure out how much do I change? And the change in shear is equal to the area under the distributed load here. And so if I look at the area, area under the distributed load this area right here is the change in shear is 8 kip per foot times 6 feet and technically this 8 kip per foot is a negative and the best way to remember this is really that it's a negative because the arrows are pointing down so I'm gonna go down to negative 48 now I have to find what is the shape well let's see the uniform the distributed load here this is constant right it's a uniformly distributed load or a constant distributed load it's eight kip per foot at every point here my shear diagram is one antiderivative away right it's an integral from the distributed load and so my shear diagram would now be linear or a function of x and so that means i'm just going to use a straight line and connect the two dots here from zero to negative 48 Yes. All right. So now at point B, I have a concentrated force of 88 kips and it's pointing up. So that means with when I have a concentrated force, I just jump up 88 kips. So I'm going to jump up from negative 48. I'm going to jump up 88, which should take me to 40. Yes. Okay. And now I got to travel from B to C or from this discontinuity at B to the discontinuity at C and the change in shear again is my area under the distributed load. And this time I'll use the color orange. Here is my distributed load right here. This area is an area of a triangle. So one half times nine feet times eight kip per foot. Again, negative because it's pointing down. And this is negative 36 kips, which means I go from 40 down and I decrease 36 by the time I get to this discontinuity. So I should be left at four kips here. Now this, I have my beginning and I know where I end. And so now the question is, what is my shape in between? And so here, my distributed load here is linear. My shear diagram is one antiderivative way. So that means this should be parabolic. And so let's see if I connect the dots with the parabola, I have a couple choices. I could go like this or like this. All right. And it's, you know, the question is, which is correct? Is it the top line or the bottom line? The way that we know that is from using this relationship right here. And this relationship just says that the slope of the shear diagram is the value of the distributed load. And whenever you have a value that's zero somewhere, that's a good place to start looking at. And here at point C, the value of the distributed load is zero. And a zero value corresponds to a horizontal line here. And that would mean that, well, shoot, the top line, I don't even have to look at the, at the way, the slope at point B, but if I look at the top line right here, that is not horizontal. So this top line is not a good choice. The only of these lines that has a zero slope here at point C is, is this bottom choice. And so my shear diagram here will be parabolic and decreasing here and it's going down horizontal. Yes, and that is my shear diagram. So I have my shear diagram. So now I wanna go ahead and draw my moment diagram and my moment diagram I'm just gonna need a horizontal line and again I am just going I am going to draw my moment diagram from discontinuity to discontinuity I'm at this time go from A to B and again the process is the same where is my start where do I end or what is the change in between the discontinuities and what is the shape to connect the dot? You know what I'm saying? And so if I go back and where do I start for the moment diagram? Well, again, I look at this, this region right here. In this case, I have no concentrated moment at point A. So I'm going to start at zero. A. Now for the change in moment, I, the change in moment is equal to the area under the shear diagram. And my area here is this area of the triangle which is one half the base which is six feet times negative 48 kips and this will have an area of negative 144 and 
That means I will decrease from 0 to negative 144. Negative 144 kip feet. And to connect the dots, well, if my shear diagram is linear, my moment diagram is one antiderivative away. So that means this segment of my moment diagram should be parabolic. And so now the question is, again, do I connect the dots like this or like this? Here, I'm going to use this relationship here which basically says that the slope of the moment diagram is the value of the shear. And again, going to values where there are zeros are really useful in this case. I look and I notice here at this point right here, the value of my shear is zero. So that means the slope of my moment diagram better look horizontal. And which means that this bottom line down here, this will not work. And so my moment diagram should be horizontal here, decrease parabolically to negative 144 here. And what it also means is that here, if, you know, this relationship here is this is a negative 48. The value of my shear at this point is negative 48, which means I should have a slope here of 48 going down to 1 at that point right here. That would be the slope of the line at that point right there, 48 to 1. So now I can go ahead and do the same process. And wow, what's interesting here is I start at negative 144, and I want to know what my change is. And so if I look at this right here, I can look at the area under the curve. And this curve can seem a little bit complicated, but it's not that bad. Uh, if I want to calculate the area here, I can break this up into a parabola and a rectangle here. And this, this purple portion right there, is the area of a rectangle. And this area would be 4 times the width of 9 feet. So this is 36 kip feet right there. The area of this portion, this portion right here, which is hard to see, but we know the slope here is zero at one end right there. And we know this side right here, this will be, let's see, this height, if you will, will be 36 kips like that. And so this green area will be equal to, well, if I look, usually on the inside cover of your textbook, you'll see a diagram that might look like this. Some will give it to you in order of the magnitude n, but here it may look like this. And it'll indicate here that the slope is zero. And here is the base and this will be the height. And if you have a parabola with a slope end of zero, this area right here is two-thirds base times height, and the other area is one-third base times height here. And in this case, we have a one-third base times height portion. This is one-third times the base, which is nine feet, times the height of 36 kips. And this will give you 108 kip feet. And together, the total area, this total area here, this total area is equal to 108 plus 36, which is 144 kip feet. So that means I go from this negative 144 to zero in my moment diagram like this. Yes, like that. And because my function here for the shear my function was parabolic. My moment function is one antiderivative away. So this is cubic. Yes. And so, you know, it's hard to graphically draw something that's different than a cubic versus parabolic. In any case, here is where we have to have some knowledge of this relationship here, that the slope of the moment diagram is equal to the value of the shear. And here at this point right here, the value of the shear is 40. It's 40, so I have a positive 40 slope that might look like this. And then at the end right here, I have a positive four. So that means my slope, it may be close to horizontal, but it is not exactly horizontal, all right? It will have a slight positive slope at the end of the graph here. And this might look like that, all right. All right, and this is what my moment diagram would look like. All right, so hopefully this was useful. Take it easy. Structure first.